All right, to sketch for our original design, we're going to be using references mostly from this source called Pixabay. Pixabay is like Google Images, except all of them are donated by artists and they are Creative Commons open, which basically means they have no limits on their use for you. We'll talk about the difference between public domain and Creative Commons open a little bit later, but we can search for things like, let me see, a funky tree. And if I scroll past the sponsored image bar, which is all stock images, which you do have to pay for, all of these are ones you can find. Now, I don't see a lot of photographs of funky trees. I see this one, that one's pretty cool. I can open that in a new tab. I see that, that's pretty cool. See that one, that's nice. So you might find a lot, but I recommend sketching before you get hung up on this and then be pretty open about what you find. I love the roots of this. So what I'm doing is just like we did Google image searches for, for exercise one, I'm scrolling through, there are 2,493 pages of images that have either funky or tree in them or both. So if I want to narrow that down, I can limit the size to, let's say, well, I want 2,000 by 2,000 pixels at least. And that's not going to limit it much because everything here is high resolution. I can say I just want photos. So get rid of all of that drawing and painting. Let's see, what else can I do? Yeah, I kind of want full color. So once you have those, this is what you'll do. You're going to go to the download options and you're going to pick the largest that they allow. And that's 5,000 by 3,000 pixels, right? If you do that, you get the best quality image for free, but you have to sign up with your email. If you don't want to sign in with your email, just get the second to the largest. <laughs> and then you can download it without having to, right? And it'll ask if you want to donate to the, to the person who posted it or not. But that is far, far better than anything you can find in Google Images, even at large. Because not only will these be high resolution, these will be curated. It's not like anything you donate to Pixabay automatically gets put on to Pixabay. You have at least, I think they have five different curators that, that have to approve each image. So it means it has to be high quality, has to be what it says it's of, have the right tags, that kind of thing. So it's a really useful search tool. And you're allowed to use it for any of your work. Okay, before I get too far, I know I want a funky tree I've actually already posted my sketch. How do you get a good sketch? I am inspired by these animation background designs. You want three layers of depth. So I do this for the first assignment. I'm going to turn on my FaceTime and I'm going to put this on the video. So you can do this at any time to understand three layers of depth. First, put your hand up in front of your face. So please do this. This will work. Now, Focus on your fingers, and you'll see that everything behind your fingers is blurry, but your fingers are in sharp focus. That's two layers of depth, foreground, background. Okay, now focus on the background, and you see that your fingers are really blurry. Still, two layers of depth, foreground, background. Now put another hand in between. Okay, now focus on the hand that's closest to you, and you have something that's sharp, and then the other hand along with the background is all blurry. That's still only two layers of depth, foreground, background. But the magic happens when you focus on the middle hand. So you focus on the middle hand, you have a blurry hand in front of it, think of it like palm fronds, and you're focusing on your prey in the jungle, and then you have the deep, dense jungle behind it, which is all blurry. So you have blurry, sharp and in focus, then blurry. That is three distinct layers of depth. That is what you want from your landscapes. And we don't just do it with blurring edges. 
We do it by having a focus in the middle ground. So let me show you how animation does that. Animated backgrounds, because they have to get activated by characters that are drawn and put on top, will always consider three layers of depth. Sometimes they're focused on the foreground. So you have like Daffy Duck swimming in the water here. So you have these rocks in the foreground, you have this island in the middle ground, and then it's just a deep horizon for the background. But the most effective ones for this assignment are when they're focused on the middle ground, where your focal point is in the middle. And then there are things in the foreground that kind of lead to that focused middle ground. And then you have a far background behind it. That works a little bit better than the background focus landscapes where the middle ground and the background kind of bleed together, right? Like for this one, that's beautiful, but it's hard to see how you could put a big character in there because you don't have a real sense of the distance in the space in between the middle ground and background. So you, we want our sketches to have foreground, middle ground, background, like these past examples, so that when we find things to put in there, it really feels like dimensional space that's filling up. And then later when we put creatures in there, we have a lot of options for where to place them, the size to use, etc. So here's my sketch. I'm basing it on my, my favorite children's book. You can pick any theme you want, any rationale you want, it just needs to be an original composition. And so my children's book has these wild types of vegetation. You know, it has this big eye in it and these huge leaves. And I like that. I want to try to interpret that in a believable way with photography that I find. So I'm including some of these things, but I'm doing it with foreground, the big tree in the middle ground, this big hill, which is actually a monster in the book. Looks like this with a tree on top. That's getting into the background. And then I have a far background, right? even kind of a little ocean. And those are the kind of shapes I want. So how do you sketch it? You honestly, you just divide up your, your rectangles in sections. So foreground, middle ground, background. How do you make a good landscape versus a bad landscape? Foreground, middle ground, background. Is that visually interesting? No. No, so let's vary it. Break with horizontals. Try not to use horizontals. Instead, let the shapes overlap each other. Foreground, already better. Middle ground, get some hills. Break it up. Maybe there's a lake here. Background, sharp mountains. So think of them like puzzle pieces that are kind of interfering and overlapping each other rather than just the ocean, the sky. And try to avoid horizontals. So if I know I want a tree, I can put that tree here as a focal point, but I want it in the middle ground. And then what do I put in front of the tree? Maybe big boxes. And then what do I put over here? Maybe a hillside. Or if I do it underwater, you know, this could be a coral reef. Or it can be a coral reef, but it's not underwater. You know, it's this fantasy. Make sense? All right. Have some fun with sketching. Come up with a few examples. And then once you're uh, comfortable sketch with your sketch, go ahead and post it. But I encourage you then to look on Pixabay and start saving images onto your thumb drives. Take care. I will see you guys on Wednesday. So I'm going to save a few of these. Put them into my assignment folder. So I click on download, I get the second to the largest size, and then put them into my folder. And I have my assignment one folder already. And if you do the second to the largest size, it will be larger than a thousand, be closer to like 2000 by 2000. But you won't even have to sign in. Now I do have an account. So, and it's easy. And they don't send a lot of junk mail or anything. So you can just download the biggest size too. You just want to sign in first. And then if you donate 10 or more images, then you don't have to see ads anymore on the site.
which is nice. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and log in so I don't have to see the banners anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, still with the mean. Sure. Yeah, just get the biggest, nice piece of reference you can. And we can always cut out pieces, shape them, layer mm -hmm. them, play with opacity, play with color. Okay. All of that will work great. Okay. I guess I'll be watching a lot of the YouTube channels tonight to learn how to uh -huh. chop them up. And get them. So I'm signed in now, and now it will let me download the largest one without asking. And it won't give me the little yeah. <laughs> ones you can buy. And they come into your downloads folder, and then you just put them in. So let's say five. So a minimum of five. Okay. Yeah. But it can be more than that. It can be more than that. Yeah. And we're going to get into, and all this is being recorded because it might be helpful to people. So we're going to get into what is the guidelines for when something is derivative. And therefore, you're not allowed to use it, or you, you can get sued and liable for damages, versus when it's transformed. And when it's transformed, then even though it might have started as someone else's idea, someone else's pixel, someone else's imagery, it has been transformed enough by you to be a, an entirely new work that then you have ownership of instead of infringing on their ownership of. Right. And so that's one of the reasons I say five minimum is because if you use five images to make one image, then you're not, and you do it equally, right? Then you're not over relying on any one image in a way that they can easily recognize and say, well, this image would be nothing without my image. This is going to be very fun. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. And you can spend a lot of time looking for reference, which can be a lot of fun. There's a part that goes with El Paso and Juarez, Mexico. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's right that edge, yeah. Rio Grande, that's Britsy. So mm -hmm. I'm going to take those two images. Great. And put those together, and I'd rather have the real open water, not cold, mm -hmm. and running through this. Cool. With the skyline that we have here. I like that. Cool. Well, and you have such different shapes for yeah. the structures that are there, like on the sides of the border. So that would be nice. The video game that I play. Uh-huh. I want to put parts of that in between. All right. So the only difficulty I foresee with finding those images or taking your own images if you're out there is trying to avoid the figurative content. Okay. Right? Now we can take people out, but that could be a lot of extra work. Well, I'm gonna so you sure want kind of just, like, yeah, you just want kind of serene that. ones that, that right. weren't when there are a lot of people out. Can you press eject to your thumb drive? Yeah, you want to eject your thumb drive before you pull it out. All right.